I invited you down today, you said you wanted to do something on Steve Cross. Yes. Why? And, and you wanted to do this at the Guitar Breaks events that we do and stuff like that. Yeah. You, you're constantly referencing him. So he's clearly been a big influence on you. Well, it's, it's through teaching, really. And, uh, and a lot of people, myself included, especially when I was a younger player, that rhythm lead, you know, be able to just sit, um, sit down on a chair or on the end of your bed or whatever and just play the guitar and not have to rely on, oh, I need a band or, or someone a backing to, or a backing track. Or obviously now when I was playing, I didn't have a loop pedal back in those the weird days of the 90s, you know what I mean? <laughs> but and, it is your only looper pedal if you can do rhythm. Yeah, at the same but time. no, you'd be able to sit there and just, you know, play. <laughs> or if you're doing the kind of dock in the bay. <laughs> that kind of stuff. And so I, I remember it clicking when I saw Prince. Oh, wow. Uh, I saw like... Um, Are they O2 or...? No, 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 it's on video, unfortunately. Oh. Just before when YouTube kicked in, and I saw, now it's quite an infamous video, but I saw him with a purple telecast, a uh, purple, sorry, Taylor acoustic, and he was kind of, this is it. You're the only burning desire. So all the Hendrix thing, really. Get on top, all right, kind of, I was like, oh, you know, and then through kind of watching that, it clicked how it happened. You play an A chord, you play a bit of stuff. And then so through teaching people, you know, for years and that Hendrixy things, or that kind of thing, I realised that it kind of all stemmed from Steve Cropper and those early R&B guys of the kind of late 50s and early 60s, you know, because you think something like Locker the Bay, where you got that G chord to a B7 to a C, but then you got all the... And he's putting those little fills in, and especially the little six and stuff. Throughout and verses and things like that. Mm. So this isn't a typical soloist thing, although no. we could do yeah. that. It's more decoration throughout the whole song, as you know, rather than a full chords rhythm part. Right? Exactly. It's yeah, yeah. It's just kind of, I suppose, filling out the holes. It's a bit like a drummer might put a little, like, little decorative little, fill. It's yeah, decorative, right? Know. So just to give a bit more context on Steve Cropper, he was a guitar player with um, Booker T and the MGs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so he yeah. did some songwriting there, but but he was he was the the stacks like go to guitar yeah, player. Yeah. I don't quote me on this, but I have to double check it. I think like all those, like Sam and Dave, I think he's on that, no, so. He's played on a lot more than even we realise yeah. when we've done some research. It's all um, that kind of stuff as well, you know. All, all, I think all that era is kind of him, you know, obviously with, um, uh, oh my God, why is he? Oh, uh, Otis Redding. Otis Redding. All that kind of, no, obviously with him, with Doc and the Bay, he's a co-writer on it, you know. Yeah, so, um, but also, so Doc and the Bay is a co-writer, but also In the Midnight Hour yeah. and Knock on Wood, I believe, yeah. is a co-writer as well. I think, I remember. Maybe on Green Onions as well. Yeah, yeah, on that. It, he was at least in the room, so. He, he can't, I remember hearing once he followed the dots. So that's the cool thing about, that's Eddie Floyd, Knock on Wood. And mm. that one literally follows the dots as in. Yeah. Vicky Steve's string. Again, I always think that the there should be a dot at the tenth fret. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> Rather yeah. than the ninth. Yeah, yeah. So if we imagine there's a dot there, it yeah, literally does yeah. it. And that goes up, right? Yeah. But then he clear I don't know which one came first, but in the midnight hour, he does the same it. thing but in reverse. And then just DNA. So all that down, 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 and it is you can kind of see where the Hendrixy little... thing comes from, you know. Just doing yeah. a little bit higher, it's the same thing, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So there's some great examples to give like a background in who who is Steve Steve um, Cropper. Um, um, so let's go for some Steve Cropper style licks, yeah. which goes into the Hendrix thing. So let's start off with that one. Yeah, and then we so can kind of like the one to the four, and then the. And then the, the little cheeky the six. six, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we we keep it kind of nice and hopefully straightforward. So if we got our little G, and then before I've even played, if you try and think of it in your head, ba -da 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 -da. so then that way you got the rhythm in your head straight away. Ba -da 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 -da. Kind of a mute and a tap on yeah. the two and four as well. Oh. 
So what's going on there? Again, if you think of it as the most straightforward that we're in, good old shape one C major pentatonic. So there is a single note, we've got D and E. And then I'm barring on this G and C on the fifth fret on that fourth and um, third strings. And then holding and hammering on straight away to that seventh fret. And then coming back. So really you could let it all ring out because that's still part of the chord, this, this new chord C over E. But it's which just is, all the minor pentatonic. It's, it's all A <laughs> minor <laughs> pentatonic, yeah. C major pentatonic. But because we're in a major sound, mm -hmm. and that now is our root, as opposed yeah. to if you was in that's the that, big thing to get. But we got that. that's our friend now, you know. So and it's all about the groove, getting it there. A bit slower. And then the kind of a, a cool response to that, we could then put our little sixth ideas. Oh, that's the sound. Which will go it? in there, yeah. So um, I don't know if we want to talk about the major, uh, the harmonised major scale. Absolutely. How that's yeah. kind of connected all in there. Yeah. That's all it is really. So a harmonised major scale the kind of little mathematical formula, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. So if you're in, in the key of G, we've got G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E major, F sharp minor. diminished or minor seven flat five, and then we got our G. So regarding these uh, sixth intervals, uh, it's still the same thing, but if you think, if we were on the third and first strings, so if you think, kind of all bar chords. But if I just took the third and first strings, uh, what am I doing? <laughs> that, so if you think- You're doing the same thing, but just on the pedestal. Exactly, so if you think that's your uh, major shape, and this would be your minor shape. So it'd be G major, A minor, B uh, minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, which thankfully is exactly the same. Yeah. And then that again. So because of that, and now for our little cheeky, that absolutely a bit. starting on the kind of A minor bit on the fifth fret on the third and first. But this is more like just a melody that's harmonised, yeah. right? Well, that's exactly it. If I would, or but we're doing, we're doing a, a harmony pass. of six, but the hard bit here is trying to. Mute out that second string, so the kind of fleshy bit of your, your finger on there. So I'm doing the fifth fret to the seventh fret, all in that minor shape. And I'm going back to the G, or you could do the full G chord there because it's still part of it, which is quite cool. 